Hey guys, what's up? Um, first things first, in case you see me really itchy and stuff, I have an ECG monitor on. So all of these pads, I've got one here, one here, and one up here, and they're all really itchy. And they're linked to this box, which has two buttons that I have no idea what they do, and I'm really scared I'm going to hit them by accident and ruin the entire thing. Because I have to wear it for seven days. I have to go all the way to London to get this fitted. It takes five minutes to fit one of these. It took us over an hour and uh, almost two hours to get there. Um, it was really stupid. And we have to go return it on Monday. So yeah, that's that. I have replacements, but I feel really bad if I keep replacing them. Because I have enough to replace it every day. So it doesn't get too bad. Because I told them last time I had a really bad reaction to them. Um, and it was disgusting but they're not recyclable so I feel really bad if I keep like using them and throwing them away so I'm trying to stick it out as long as possible but anyway back to the actual point five things of what not to say or do with someone who is disabled this is my opinion so some other people might be like oh that's fine uh, but I've tried to put like what to do instead maybe but that doesn't necessarily apply to all of them. So, number one, do not, under any circumstances, move someone's mobility aid without asking. I had someone the other day who, I don't know them, and they were like, oh, let me help you, and started pushing me in my wheelchair. And I was like, no, 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 please, please don't, please don't. And he was like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And I was like, no, no, please, please stop, because it's really scary. You have no control over it. And he pushed me in the wrong direction. So that was wonderful. And I know he was trying to help, but it's just not okay. It's like if someone went up to you, picked you up, and carried you off somewhere and was like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's not fine. If you need to move someone's walking stick, if it's in the way, ask them to do it. Because if they don't know where it is, they're then stuck and it's very scary. Some people have proper attachments to it if they don't know where it is and they can't, like, feel it around them. Especially if they're blind, like. Then, like, they get into a real panic. So, please don't do that. Especially not moving someone's wheelchair. Because not only that, it invades their personal space. Which is something number two. Personal space. I'm in, I'm in a wheelchair when I go out a lot of the time. And I know people are trying to be nice, but they get, like, hit in my face. Or, like, they're leaning on my wheelchair. Which, a part of me doesn't mind, but also, people keep leaning on the back of my wheelchair and it's like starting to break it. Um, and like, you don't think twice about it, like you'd lean on something near someone anyway. But, it means that they're like, right up against me, and I don't like that. Some people don't mind, obviously everybody's different. But personally, I don't like it when people are like, really close to me. Because it sets off my panic alarms. I'm like, okay, I need to get out of this situation. Because, like, sensory overload. Um, needing to have a way out. If someone's leaning on me, I can't move too fast. But I feel really bad. I feel like I have to have a reason to be there. Because I'm in a wheelchair and, like, society tells you as a disabled person. That you're not welcome. And it's, sometimes it's not intentional. But a lot of the time with not accessible places, with just in general, like, it's hard to feel like you're worth anything. Um, and I'm working on it, but telling people, like, to stop doing stuff makes it feel like I'm taking away, like, leaning on the wheelchair. That means there's a reason for me to be there in the wheelchair so someone else can use it and lean on it. And... That is horrible. Like, I should feel like there's more to use than just for someone else to lean on. But it basically is really hard. So please don't do that. Uh, number three. Uh, please stop thinking you're accessible because you have an accessible entrance. This is a hard one to do because... I don't know. It's like... People go, oh, but we have a ramp, so we're accessible. And I'm like, cool. But, like, especially in shops, even if they have an accessible entrance, some places don't then have a lift to get onto the second floor. Some places have wide enough aisles, but then they put extra bits in the middle of the aisles or on the edge. And then as I'm going through, I move them out of the way, and shop assistants look at me 
watch me move stuff out of the way and then put it back in the same space. So then I have to move them when I'm coming back out of that bit. It's so stupid. Um, and there are other little bits like cafes, just because like they have they had like a ramp, and they were like, yeah, it's fine. But I went to a place, and it said on the door, "Ask at the till for the ramp." You had to go inside to get the ramp. I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> Luckily, I had my mum with me. And she could take, she went, she left me outside in the street, which makes me panic. I don't like that. Especially because it was in London, so I don't know London so well. Um, so I don't know, I wouldn't be able to like see any of my friends and be like, hey, chat with me so I'm not on my own. She had to go inside, get the ramp, come outside, put it down. The door didn't stay open, so we had to push the door open as we were going up the ramp and into the thing. Nobody stopped to help. And it's, that's just not helpful. Number four, do not ignore them. I was in a garden centre the other day and my friend paid for her stuff first and then I went to pay for my stuff. I was sat with the card, I'd been chatting to my friend like normally and then the person at the till looked to my friend to pay for the stuff and she spoke talking to her. She didn't speak to me at all. She spoke to my friend entirely. This happens a lot, especially because like, if you're in a wheelchair, people automatically assume you have learning difficulties. Even if people do have learning difficulties, um, they can still, like sometimes obviously you can't communicate with people and you have another person there, like a carer or something, to communicate them with them. But not all disabled people need that person. I, have my, I had my friend with me, A, because we were hanging out, B, because I needed someone to push me. I can't push myself, but I can talk. It just It's just really annoying. Like, it happens a lot. People are like, ah, it's just one incident. But literally, it happens all the time. People automatically assume and talk to the people who stood up around me, if I'm with a group of people, or whoever's pushing me in the chair, um, and don't talk to me. And they're like, oh, does she... And talk about me, but to the other people, because I'm in the chair. And I'm like, hi. I'm, I can talk. Up until a year ago... I was, well, a year ago I wasn't really able-bodied, but I could walk around, like, up until five years ago, I was an able-bodied person, and not necessarily, even if you weren't, like, the, if you spend the entirety of your life disabled, you c sometimes you can still speak to the people, you know? Not all the time. Sometimes it's difficult. But assessing the, like, trying to talk to the person first is probably the best bet. Okay? Unless the person behind them starts to talk to you first, which probably indicates, hi, this person can't communicate, I'm communicating for them. Unless that happens, assume that the disabled person can talk. Because it's really disheartening to not be able to have your own communication. And finally, number five. Stop making them feel less than we already feel. That is a weird title for this one, but it just basically is because, like, I've had situations where, like, in church people have been like, have you tried praying? Maybe that will make you feel better. Have you tried yoga? Have you tried this? Which implies you haven't tried everything. It's probably your fault. That may not be what you think you're saying, but that's what it comes across as. Plus... I'm not allowed to do yoga. I have hypermobility. If you do yoga and you have hypermobility, you're stretching the already stretchy joints and possibly making it worse. So everybody that keeps going, oh, yoga will fix everything. Oh, maybe you should be vegan. No. Plus, if I'm vegan, I can't eat crap. Like, <laughs> I can't eat so much stuff already. Where am I going to get my um, food groups? words um but yeah like there are so many different things that i've heard people say about of what people say to them that just make them feel so much less like some people are really horrible like go home you shouldn't be out huh, what are you doing in a wheelchair even just not even saying anything just looking like i get so many looks like 
when I'm going around in a wheelchair. And I'm like, no, stop judging me. Plus, as someone who can walk a little bit and is in a wheelchair, when I get up and then walk about or get up to stretch my legs because my legs hurt from sitting down too much, I get so many looks like, oh yeah, she's definitely faking it. You're not really in a wheelchair, are you? Why do you need a wheelchair if you can walk and stuff like that? And like, it's just not helpful. We already feel bad enough. Don't make it worse, okay? That was a really long video. It's been 10 minutes. I'm so sorry. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time when hopefully I won't be this itchy. Bye.